Space is too big for, to flat Earth's mindset. They don't understand rocket. They don't believe in satellites. And perhaps they don't believe in life forms on other places. Today's flurf who have problem with things in space is Kyle Adams. First of all, I want to thank all my patrons, members, donors and subscribers. All of you are important for me. Thank you very much. It's been a while since I made a video about Kyle Adams. In this video I'm looking at, he seems to have some problems with the ISS. Previously, I noted how if I were to jump off the top of a ladder, it is going to hurt a lot more than if I were to jump off the bottom of a ladder. Because the more time I spend falling, the faster I'm going to fall. That's basic physics, and it's something you learn early in school. But it's some limits to it, because you have a maximum speed you can get up to because of the air resistance. I then asked a bunch of different globe earthers if the Earth is a globe and the ISS is continually falling around the world, why isn't it increasing in speed? The globe earthers gave me a wide range of different answers to that. Evidently, you didn't understand that you have a maximal speed when you're falling, but you think all who knows that we live on a globe would be experts in how the ISS works. Now please listen carefully to how Werner von Braun describes orbital mechanics. Now, what exactly makes an orbit tick? Imagine you put a gun on top of a mountain and fire in horizontal direction. The gravitational pull of the Earth will pull the bullet down towards the ground and after having traveled a certain distance the bullet will finally strike the ground. Now as we increase the muzzle velocity the bullet will travel farther and at a certain speed the curvature caused by the gravitational pull of the earth which pulls the bullet down will exactly match the curvature of the earth. The bullet will then keep on flying around the earth and will fall and fall, never being able to reach the surface of the Earth until it finally hits the breech of the gun from the rear. This is an orbit. You can establish such orbits at various altitudes. All right, so in order to achieve an orbit to where this yellow ball will not spiral down to the ground, the pull of gravity represented by this arrow needs to be canceled out by another force. And if there is another force coming upward that will cancel it out, yeah, sure, that could possibly prevent the ISS from gaining speed. But what force did he claim was canceling out the force of gravity? Let's listen to that again real quick. For it is the centrifugal force in the curved orbit that cancels the gravitational pull of the Earth and keeps the object in its stable orbit. He said centripetal, right? Where did he say centrifugal? Which is another pronunciation for centrifugal force. Centrifugal force. Or sometimes mispronounced centrifugal force. Centrifugal or centrifugal. All right. So this, it turns out there's no such thing as centrifugal force. It's fictitious. It's an illusion. It's the word we give to this thing that feels like a force operating on you if you are the water in that bucket. Ready? Yep. All right, let's do this. Oh, 
what's happening is, because you're getting spun, you have an urge to fly off at a tangent of that circle, okay? That urge to fly off that is prevented, you will feel as a centrifugal force. There you had several great explanations, but I'm sure that you will mess this up in some mysterious way. Gravity has to get cancelled out by centripetal force, which in this case is gravity. So according to Von Braun, the downward force of gravity gets cancelled out by the downward force of gravity and prevents the satellite from spiraling down to the Earth. Please tell me you see what is wrong with this picture. There is no upward force cancelling out the downward force. Kyle, are you for real? You did not understand the illustration with the bucket? Therefore, they should be continually increasing in speed since there is no force to prevent gravity from causing them to do so. People love to use this whole ball and string example to demonstrate their understanding of how orbits work. But what gets overlooked in this is the fact that the string doesn't reel the ball inward. And since gravity would reel the ball inward, this whole example is a misdirection. Now, here is a yellow ball with one force acting on it. As such, it is an imbalanced force. And since the ball has nothing to oppose it, that ball should move downward. And when an equal and opposite force is introduced, that is when we have balanced forces, and that ball shouldn't move anywhere. When we add a third force, we have one set of balanced forces and an imbalanced force. So that ball should move straight to the right. In this instance, we have two imbalanced forces. The horizontal force does not cancel out or balance out the downward force. So the ball should move diagonally and to the right. Oh dear, this is too stupid. You show that around a ball, it will result in a downward spiral. It's time to get out there and make some noise. Abolish NASA, let's do this thing. Kyle is a typical flat earther, so he haven't done any research at all. He don't understand the explanations he's showing, and he haven't checked the fact that the ISS orbital attitude drops gradually over time due to Earth gravity pull and atmospheric drag. So, how did they solve that problem? They have uh, uh, engines so they can make reboost maneuver using uh, the service model or visiting spacecrafts. Okay, this was all for this time. I hope you liked the video and a big thanks to all of you helping me helping Ukraine with the super chats, the donations, memberships and that you're watching my videos. See you soon. Have a nice day.